Hi, I'm Nico and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Engineer at Isovalent. Hi, and I'm Raphael and I'm working with Nico as well at Isovalent. Right, so questions I have today is I want to find out more about the cellular architecture and all the different components and how they work together and the role of each uh, component. So can you start maybe with giving a, like a big overview of like, this cellular architecture and then we'll drill down into each component? No, oh, great question. So big overview, essentially the main component that they usually look at is the Cilium agent. So the Cilium agent is deployed on every Kubernetes node and it's responsible for programming the node and essentially programming the kernel uh, to do the routing, to do the security for Cilium, right? So you will specify the routing, the security using Kubernetes resources and then the Kubernetes control plane and the agent will turn this into actually implementing it using eBPF in most cases in some cases, it will actually use the Envoy proxy on each node for layer 7 routing and security. You mentioned eBPF before and Envoy. So why do we need Envoy when we can just use eBPF for? Yeah, that's a great question. So at, at this point, there's a lot of things we can do with eBPF. Layer 3, layer 4 routing we can do with eBPF. Uh, layer 3, layer 4 network policies, so security firewall we can do with eBPF. We can even do some observability at layer 7 with eBPF. But the layer seven routing uh, is kind of an issue with eBPF at this point. And the, the reason is essentially that there's some uh, stateful protocol things that have to happen for, for layer seven, uh, which, which would be really hard to implement in eBPF if not possible at all at this point. In the future, it's possible that eBPF would actually evolve in such a way that it would be possible to do layer seven routing okay. and security. At this point, we need to use an external uh, reverse proxy. So we use Envoy for this. Okay, and so we use Envoy, and how is it deployed? Is it uh, you know, deployed inside the agent, or? So in, in the past, it used to be deployed with the agent and just started uh, ad hoc when, when necessary. There's actually a, an option now with Cilium to deploy it uh, as, a, as a daemon set, mm -hmm. so it can be deployed separately, but again, you'll have one Envoy per node. The only difference is that instead of being inside the Cilium pod, it will be its own pod, so that when Cilium restarts for an upgrade, for example, the, the, the layer 7 proxy will not be restarted at the same time. Okay. So you said before it was uh, Angel, Envoy was deployed ad hoc for use cases. So what are the use cases where you would need Envoy in, uh, in, in, in Cilium? Yeah, so it, it's typically layer 7 things, right? And layer 7 routing and security essentially. And that's one really good strength, I think, of Cilium is that, you know, usually security and observability are a trade-off, right? Uh, the more security and observability you want, the more you lose on performance, obviously. And even with the best security, uh, performing security and observability platform, you still lose a little bit. Yeah. The great thing with Cilium is that you can choose. You can say between this pod and this pod, I want more security, I want layer seven security, I will go through Envoy, I know I will lose a bit in performance, mm -hmm. but between this pod and this other pod, I actually want the performance, so I will not set a layer seven network policy, instead I just want layer three. Okay. So you can choose for every connection, for every type of traffic, where you want to put the cursor between security, observability, and performance. Got it. And, and so what is the component that gives you that observability? So that'd be Hubble. So okay. Hubble is the one that gets the information either from the Cilium agent or from the Envoy proxy as well, and okay. provides metrics and flows and the service map. And Hubble, Hubble is based on Cilium, right? You need Hubble, well, you need Cilium to run Hubble. Uh, that's a good question, actually. It's possible to run Cilium without Hubble. Uh, Hubble can also be used to display information coming from Tetragon, which is another project uh, within the Cilium project. So we, we actually know of some people that run Tetragon without Cilium, and mm -hmm. they visualize the data in Hubble. So Hubble can be used for both projects. Okay. And Hubble is, uh, what's the architecture? Is it also some kind of agent-based or...? So in Hubble, there's, there's some uh, information that will come from Cilium uh, on every node. And we have a component that is called Hubble Relay. Mm -hmm. And Hubble Relay gets the flows from all the nodes in the cluster, gathers them, and then allows you to query these flows using a gRPC uh, protocol. Okay. And then you can see the flows either in a CLI or in a web UI. Okay, so you can use Hubble UI mm -hmm. to visualize all the flows, or as you said, the Hubble CLI to also Yes. Filter the flows. And there is also the Cilium CLI, right? So what is it? 
oh, useful. That's a different going, thing, going, right? Going back, uh, going back to another. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, there's a Hubble CLI that lets you see the observability data on the, your whole cluster. Yeah. And the Cilium CLI actually allows to control the cluster, get the status of the cluster, uh, get uh, just global information about the cluster that you wouldn't get for a single node, right? So you can either query a Cilium agent and see information for a specific node, but the Cilium CLI is for the whole cluster. And it can typically allow you to install the cluster. It's a very easy way to install Cilium on a cluster. Not necessarily what you want in production, where you might want to use the Helm chart instead directly. But one great thing, one, one thing I really like to do with the Cilium uh, CLI is actually generate the Helm values. So Cilium CLI can actually uh, look at the type of cluster you're running, mm -hmm. generate the most sensible values for this cluster, and then uh, export them as a YAML value file for Helm, and then you can use them uh, in your GitOps automation or whichever tool you're using to actually install. So it looks at like whether it's a kind cluster, MIDI cube, GK, or that kind of cluster. It looks at the underlying platform, right? That's exactly. Yeah. 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 So Cilium CLI will detect this. Okay. In addition to this, it can also show you the the status. So it will it will prompt for the status of every Cilium agent in the cluster and show you a global view of how the Cilium agent is doing, of how uh, the Hubble deployment is doing, depending on which options you've put. So you can see with one comment if there's anything broken in your cluster as far as Cilium is concerned. Okay, and he also shows you the status of the operator, which is the other That's right. component we haven't talked about. What's, what's the role of the operator within Cilium? Yeah, so the operator essentially does everything that an agent shouldn't do, right? Okay. Uh, so every agent is responsible for a single node, but there's some operations that are not node specific. They're global to the cluster. Okay. Uh, this can be garbage collection typically, so whenever a node is deleted from the cluster, who's responsible for removing the resources attached to this node? That'd be the, the Cilium uh, operator. Okay. Uh, but it can also be responsible for other things related to a cluster globally. For example, uh, interacting with the environments. That can be interacting with uh, the, the, the cloud provider API in order to get IP addresses from an IPAM API, for example. Okay. Uh, or it can be other things that have to integrate with the environment of the cluster. So Awesome. Well, thanks very much for your time. Thank you for uh, watching this very short introduction to Cilium.